First, I will give you the objective of a marketer. And I'm capturing it in, in, in six letters. And let me stand, tell you what this stands for. The marketer is interested in creating, communicating, and delivering value to a target market at a profit. It's as simple as that. CCDVTP. Are you doing that? Are you creating new value? Are you communicating it? Are you delivering it to a clear market that you defined? Not a mass market, a clear market niche or, or segment at a profit. Now, the next thing is there's a process that marketers use. If Mexico wants to sell something to another country, it will always start with R or research. I mean, you need some information about whether the neighboring country will be interested in your furniture or interested in your food products. From research, we will learn the market is kind of complex. Every market consists of segments. You can slice and dice a market in many ways. And now the choice is to target those parts of the market that would be most interested in your offering. So it's ST, segmentation and targeting, and then positioning, where you let the new market know who you are and what they can expect to get. And then you remember that the big uh, philosophy of today's marketing is CIB, customer is boss. And the real question is, how many of you spend any time with becoming one of your customers? There's an old statement that the best way to attack your competitors is to attack yourself first. Namely, you have some faults. And I don't know what they are, but think of yourself as a customer of your own company and ask if you would buy from your own company compared to the other competitors. In fact, if you ask Johnson & Johnson, what's the first group you want to serve? They will never say the owners. They will say first the customers. And what's the second group that you really care about? Well, the employees. What's the third group? The community in which we operate. Be a good community citizen. What's the fourth group? The, the shareholders. But by focusing on the first three, they generate wealth for the fourth. Ask a hundred of your customers the following. One question. Would you be comfortable recommending our company to others? and score it on a 10-point scale. 10 for the customer who says, I love your company, I've already been doing that, and I will continue to do it. That's a passionate, loyal customer. Nine, if he says, I've not done it, but I have no problem talking about how good you are. An eight would be a little less, all the way down to a one, which you get when some customer says, I'm through with you, I hate you, I will tell everyone how bad you are. Now take the percentage of customers who gave you a 10, 9, or 8. Subtract the percentage who gave you a 1 through 6. That's your net promotion score. It's a percentage minus another percentage, and that's your net promotion score. And Fred says that correlates well with your, certainly your customer satisfaction and your profitability and your sales growth. Some people are arguing about whether it correlates that strongly, but these companies that are loved have a high score on customer advocacy, the customers themselves being advocates. So I gave you a simple way to reduce your marketing costs. Let the customer be good to your customers so that they recommend you, basically.